An overnight shooting leaves a St. Louis man dead. Why police believe what witnesses saw could lead them to his killer. Making headway when responding to emergencies. We're following up with the city's approach to hire and retain 911 dispatchers. Israel's damned if you do and damned if you don't. It's not a conflict, it's not a war, it's a genocide. Supporting both sides in the same city, we went to both pro-Israel and pro-Palestine rallies to hear St. Louis's thoughts on the fighting overseas. Warm and sunny today, but after this, shower chances increase through the rest of the week, with temperatures staying warm until the weekend. It would be extremely, extremely devastating financially. An Illinois tax break scholarship program is set to expire. How the program's termination could affect Metro East families and schools. Move over Mariah Carey. The NFL players releasing their own renditions of holiday classics this winter. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. We need to cut our own CD one day. Ooh. We can sing. We can, can sing. I can. Uh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's a live look at downtown St. Louis from City Park. Yeah, it's almost playoff time. We'll tell you the latest on City SC and when they could play their first match and who that first match could possibly be against. But right now, we're a little concerned about the weather changing up on us. So probably not a good time to start playing soccer, at least not in the uh, near future. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October the 23rd. I'm Rennie Nott. And I'm Mercedes McKay. Michelle Lee has the morning off. We just want to thank everyone for watching us today, including those on 5 Plus. Joined by Paul Cook, Anthony Slaughter. And Anthony, just like Rennie mentioned, we have some drizzle coming in. Oh, well, it's going to be more than drizzle. Than drizzle. <laughs> yeah. uh, more than this. He we have wrong. <laughs> several days of rain coming our way oh. beginning tomorrow. And once we get into the weekend, probably a complete washout of a weekend. So uh, here we go, getting into mm. November with a uh, pattern cooling on down. But this final week of October will still be warm, but also a little bit rainy. Today is the dry day when it comes to any kind of precipitation. But you can see a warm front is lifting through the middle of the country, and that is going to bring our rain chances beginning tomorrow. Tomorrow. So after this warm front lifts through, the warm air starts to filter on in for the rest of the week. Starting off near 50 this morning, sunshine galore today up near 80 degrees. Now, as mentioned, today is a dry day, but beginning tomorrow in the afternoon and evening, we could have some showers, maybe even some thunderstorms around, and that gets us into the weekend as well. We'll talk about how much rain is on the way and a look at the numbers on the seven day that's coming up. Let's get you out the door on time and head to work and school. Paul is here tracking that traffic. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Anthony. Okay, we are searching for delays out there, and there aren't very many. You're like, wait, I avoid delays. Well, I'm searching for them so that you don't have to. We are dealing with uh, lights on flash here, and I think that's what's related, but not a big delay. Lindbergh uh, at Clayton. This is the construction we're going to be talking about. It's all back this morning and well, I'm going to keep an eye on it anywhere that it could cause delays. We've been talking a little bit about this arrivals and departures. Some lanes are going to be closed here this morning that just started, so they're going to be worrying about that a little bit and take an eye on, uh, take a good look at it the next time we talk in just a few minutes. This is new from overnight. A man is dead following a shooting in a shopping center parking lot and this morning police believe they know who's involved in it. Five on your side, Holden Kerwicki joins us live outside of St. Louis Police Headquarters with what we're learning this morning. Good morning, Holden. Well, good morning, Mercedes. Good morning, Reddy. According to St. Louis Metropolitan Police, this is the 132nd homicide in the city of St. Louis this year. But police believe that the victim in this case wasn't the only person injured in this incident. Now, this all happened around 1040 last night when police received multiple calls about a shooting in the parking lot of a Rena Center at the intersection of Gravoy and Cherokee. EMTs responding to the scene found a man suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to to the hospital where he later died. He was taken to the hospital. However, witnesses were able to give police a good description of those possibly involved. Two other subjects that were observed over top of him and then left seen in a black SUV leaving west on Cherokee. We've located that vehicle and possibly those suspects at a local hospital too with uh, stab wounds. 
Right now, it's unclear if those suspects have been taken into custody or if they will face charges in connection with this shooting. Reporting live in downtown St. Louis, Holden Kerwicki, Five on Your Side. Thank you, Holden. For months now, Five on Your Side has covered issues in St. Louis City's 911 dispatch system. Understaffing has led to some long wait times. Now there's a new public safety director, and the mayor claims he's making improvements. Our Alex Fees is live for us outside City Hall in downtown St. Louis with more on this. Alex? Rennie, good morning. Uh, the city of St. Louis has boosted pay for some of those 911 dispatchers in the hopes that will decrease some of those job openings. New public safety director and longtime fire department administrator Charles Coyle says recent pay increases have uh, helped with that recruiting. Under his leadership, our public safety divisions have hired more than 20 dispatchers since August of this year. Charles Coyle says in his mind, 911 dispatchers are first responders. Over the past several months, people have complained about being put on hold when dialing 911 in the city. In January, husband and father of three, Richard Slushing, died in his car at the St. Louis intersection after accidentally shooting himself in the leg. 911 was the last number he dialed from his cell phone. Phone records show no one answered. In July, 33-year-old Catherine Cohen died after a tree fell in her car during severe weather in the Grove neighborhood. Witnesses say repeated calls to 911 went unanswered over about 30 minutes during a very busy period. Coyle says the city will continue hiring new dispatchers. Uh, since the pay increases, we have hired 26 dispatchers that are in training. Now, EMS dispatchers can start working on their own after about five months. Police dispatcher training takes longer. It takes eight months. Coming up at 630, just how much 911 wait times are improving. Live this morning outside City Hall, Alex Fees, five on your side. Thanks so much, Alex. Today and tomorrow, Central Visual and Performing Arts in collegiate high schools are closed in remembrance of last year's school shooting. Tomorrow marks one year since the horrific shooting. The tragedy took the lives of CVPA teacher Jean Kushka and student Alexandria Bell. The Bullet Related Injury Clinic will host a healing event tomorrow to help students and community members. Tomorrow morning, today in St. Louis, we'll have coverage of what has changed in the city since that horrific day. Developing this morning, as airstrikes are intensifying in the Middle East, we're learning the U.S. Navy is sending more ships to Israel. The Department of Defense says ships will increase protection for U.S. forces in the region. Also ordered the deployment of advanced missiles defense systems. Those are designed to shoot down short to intermediate ballistic missiles. The hope is the extra resources will help stop the fighting between Israel and Hamas from spreading. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin says he'll consider deploying more resources if necessary. Right now here at home, tensions from the war are being felt in St. Louis. Last night, there were two rallies, one in support of Israel, the other in support of Palestinians. Both happened at the same time, just a few miles apart. We spoke with St. Louisans at both about why they wanted to take to the streets. It is very hard to being Jewish in this world today and even harder to be an Israeli. Um, it seems like the world just doesn't care about us anymore. At the end of the day, all, all we have is each other, especially uh, being Muslim here in this country. There's not much of us out here, so us standing together really makes a difference. You can read more about both rallies right now on KSDK.com in the As Seen on TV section. All right, let's take a break from the news and talk about our weather this morning. In fact, we are looking at a cool start, but a warm finish, all because of a warm front that's actually lifting through today. So we go to the future cast and you can see how that warm front lifts through. No rain today, but as we go into tomorrow, there will be an area of low pressure to our south that will kick up moisture along with a front that starts to move this way. So we will have these converge right over us tomorrow afternoon and evening. So there could be a spotty shower around tomorrow. And as long as this front hangs out over us Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, Friday, there will be even more chances of rain. So today's dry, but the next few days we do have showers returning, but temperatures do stay warm this week until the weekend when they start to come on down. We'll talk about that weekend forecast and how much rain's on the way. That's coming up after the break. Tomorrow, Illinois lawmakers will return to Springfield for the veto fall session. How debate on one bill will directly impact thousands of kids, including some in the Metro East. 
Plus, House Republicans are back to square one with nine new candidates throwing their hats in the ring for the Speaker's gavel, when the GOP is expected to hold their next vote. Well, it's beginning to sound a lot like Christmas in Philadelphia. How listening to music by some NFL players could help people in need.